Well, hello, everyone. Um, uh, my name is Kevin. I am the Digital Resources Manager at PSS. Uh, today, I am here with Tim Hyatt. We are here to do Tech Talk with Tim. Uh, today's <laughs> topic is identifying malicious emails. Uh, as I said, this will be presented by Tim Hyatt. He has a degree in computer science and business administration. He owned and operated Hyatt Computer since 1999. Uh, High Computer provides technical support and consulting services to dozens of nonprofit organizations and companies in the tri state area. Um, we do have a series of webinars going on. Uh, today, like I said, is identifying malicious emails. Uh, Thursday of this week, we'll be doing Computer Hardware 101. And as you can see, we have a nice variety of webinars coming up. Um, we do these Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, the last one will be on September 1st. Uh, so if you have already signed up for everything, great. If you have not, uh, just go back to where you signed up originally, and you can always re-sign up for the ones that you didn't sign up for already. Um, so thank you. Uh, going on, uh, as I said, I work for PSS. PSS was founded in 1962, and it is an innovative multi-service agency whose mission is to strengthen the capacity of older New Yorkers, their families, and communities to thrive. Our educational and other programs are online. Um, we have our nine local centers and other locations designed to help older adults stay healthy, engaged, and connected. We also have our PSS Circle of Care program, which is um, you can find online at pssCaregivers.org. Uh, that ensures that those caring for someone who is frail, chronically ill, or has memory loss are not alone. Uh, we also serve kinship caregivers, both young and old, and you can find out information about that program as well on the PSS Circle of Care page. Uh, then we have our Coming of Age program. We have both the national, which is comingofage.org, and our New York City, which is our local um, branch, which is comingofagenewyorkcity.org. That program inspires people 50 plus to live with passion and purpose. And if you wish to learn more about PSS in general, you can always visit our website at pssusa.org. Um, if you have any questions, as this is a webinar, uh, you are all muted. Um, but if you do have questions, if you look towards either the top or bottom of your screen or your device somewhere, you should see an option for Q&A um, or the chat. Um, if you enter your questions into the Q&A, I will be looking at those and organizing them. Uh, I will also be looking at the chat uh, as well to see if there's any questions submitted. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and pass this over to Tim. So Tim, if you wish to go ahead and share your screen. Hello, everybody. Let me, uh, let me see if I can figure this out. As Kevin, is, I don't know, Kevin, you mentioned this is, this is a first for me. So this is bound to be somewhat interesting. So. Let me see how far I can get here. I've got my PowerPoint open. And thank you for your patience, everybody. And thank you for, uh, for joining us. As, uh, as Kevin was saying, my name is Tim Hyatt. I'm president of Hyatt Computer. My company actually services Presbyterian Senior Services and provides them with technical support and um, technical uh, help. So, um, Kevin, can you see my screen now or not? No, not yet. Okay, let's see what we can do here. I want to share my screen, right? Yes. Okay, there it is. I got it. Oh, I see. I'm on the I'm on the PowerPoint presentation. That's why I'm having trouble. I need to change it over to the. the new. Sorry, everybody. First time here. Sorry. And I'm going to just click on the camera there and then share screen. There we go. Thank you, everybody. Okay, so there we are. All right. Thank you for your patience, everybody. And we're about to go. On the beginning, yay. Okay, see that, Kevin? Yep, you're good to go. Okay, fantastic. Okay, thank you for joining us, everyone. Now that I'm online and working, I can breathe a little, breathe a little side of leave there. This, uh, today's presentation is about malware. Um, now coming from, you know, meaning bad, right? Where from software, hardware. 
Identification prevention. This is a big, big problem in our industry. Um, people are sending money to what we call bad actors because they're tricked into thinking the an email came from their boss or someone else when it actually came from someone typically out of the country who's looking to steal your money. So this presentation is by me, Tim Hyatt. My email address is below. If you need to communicate with me, you can reach me at thyatt at hyattcomputer.com. Our main number is 888-492-8841. So the first couple of slides are gonna be somewhat dry. Uh, it's a necessity. I have to uh, I have to define some of the terms. I have to make sure everyone has a has a basic understanding of what we're talking about. Um, and at the end of this slide, when I start when I finish reading it, you're going to be given an opportunity to ask questions uh, at that moment, or you can start typing your questions as they come up. Um, so we're talking about malware. Malware is short for malicious software. It's a term for any software that gets installed on your computer and performs unwanted tasks often for some third party's benefit. And what's the benefit? They're gonna take your money, right? Or they're gonna take your attention. They're gonna to try to sell you something. Um, malware programs can range from being simple annoyances. Some of you will remember how pop-ups used to be a big problem where you go on a website and all of a sudden seven windows would pop up advertising different products, hoping you buy them, okay? Not, not so malicious, right? To causing serious computer invasion and damage, stealing your passwords and your data, right? <laughs> Person out, uh, identity theft, okay? or infecting the machines on network. One of the, 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 the large town thing in South Carolina is they had to shut down their entire town because of a virus on their network. Additionally, some malware programs are designed to transmit information about your web browsing habits to advertisers or other parties without you knowing. So there's no, uh, it's, it's bad stuff. It ranges from minor bad to very bad. Um, do we have any questions, Kevin? None so far. Oh, okay. We'll go to the next screen. <clears throat> One or two more dry slides here. I want to define the different types of malware you might encounter. Um, one of the more common uh, specific terms for a type of malware is a virus. A virus is a software that can replicate itself. It's, it's, that's, that's how we define life, right? Uh, replicate itself uh, to other computers, potentially deleting data, but often just a nuisance requiring the operating system to be reinstalled. Uh, there's also adware. That's where uh, you got software installed on your computer you weren't aware of, you didn't mean to install it. But all of a sudden, every time you go on the Internet Explorer, it pops up an ad for some, uh, some flower shop or something, right? So it's, it's invasive. There's spyware. Spyware is software that surreptitiously gathers information and transmits it to another party. Your information gathered includes visited websites, browser system information, and your computer's IP address, the location. Again, not so bad. Um, the... Uh, some of you may have noticed if you, if, you, uh, if you go on certain websites and you look at a product, all of a sudden you start seeing ads for similar products. That's a, that's a very minor form of invasive software. And then finally on the screen, you have browser hijacking software. It's advertising software that modifies your browser settings, creates desktop shortcuts, and displays intermittent advertising pop-ups. This software may also redirect links to other websites. This, these are relatively uh, uh, dated types of malware. We don't see that anymore because the bad actors out there have really upped their game and they're no longer interested in just uh, being annoying. They want to take all of your money. So, and they have great, very interesting ways of doing that. And we're gonna cover several, uh, many of those. Um, malware terms we're gonna cover, all right? For example, some of you may have heard the term spoofing. Right? Spoofing is when you make an email appear to come from someone else. Um, our, our, our typical uh, user out there uh, doesn't, uh, oops, I didn't mean to do that. A typical user um, doesn't have control like that. I can't change what my email says when it goes out um, uh, for something fake, uh, but it's possible, right, to make it appear to come from someone in your office or someone you know. Uh, you guys may have also heard of phishing attacks. It's a PH fish, right? Um, phishing attacks are supp supposedly an email from a reputable company or friend asking you to reveal personal information, such as passwords and credit card numbers, okay? Very important point. I don't think I mentioned later in the presentation. I want to mention it now. The IRS will never call you at home. Anytime you get a call, a telephone call, they claim to be with the IRS or somehow related to the IRS, don't, uh, don't fall for it. The IRS only initiates conversations via uh, U.S. mail. Um, 
Recently, the, the, these things will come in the form of an email stating there's a secure message that you can only read if you provide your email address and password, right? Once, okay, so uh, again, a little pause here. Um, if someone's sending me a secret message, how is, how is knowing my password going to give me access to their secret message? So there's often some, some, uh, some minor points you can pick up on to see something's not quite right, okay? Uh, the other thing is, you know, gee, how many, I've never gotten a secure message in 20 years, and all of a sudden pop, one pops up, you've got to be, you know, it's got to be suspect. Okay, and then once, uh, once, a, once a phishing attack is successful, um, what's happened is the, the bad actor has, uh, has acquired your username and password, typically for something like Office 365. Well, they have the keys to the castle, because Office 365 is a full function contact management software. It includes your address book. It includes all of your notes. It includes uh, your contact, your address book, contacts, calendar. Okay, your, all your email, and they will take it apart and use it to to try to steal money from other people. All sorts of bad schemes out there. So, uh, bottom line, no one's going to ask for your password. It's, it's it's it'll never be legitimate. Never type your password out. That's that's what they try to try to get. Type it. It's not it's, it's not it doesn't seem as bad as saying it out loud. And finally, ransomware. Um, this is this is a current big problem in our uh, in the IT industry, or the uh, technology industry. Um, what the people will do is once they gain access to your computer, whether it's by some flaw in the operating system, or if you uh, typically it comes about because the end user allows them, says you know, this is click on this, and before you know it, they're they're controlling your computer. Okay. Um, once one of these guys is able to control your computer, they install a program that uh, encrypts the data on your hard drive. So everything is lost. Everything has been coded and only they have the key. Only they have the passcode. So they'll come back to you and they'll say, okay, you want your data to be encoded? It's gonna cost you $2,000, right? Well, $2,000 is a lot of money, but if you're running a company and uh, or you're working for a company and you just uh, you've lost everything due to, uh, due to indiscretion on your part, um, and the company might be losing two thousand dollars an hour, right? You need to get that data back. So sometimes we actually have to deal with these people uh, to order to expedite the uh, data. The only other option there is uh, recovering from backup. Any uh, all companies uh, with their IT staff should have uh, current daily backups, and that's where we, uh, we can fall back on that if necessary. So uh, losing a day's work is the biggest uh, um, possible uh, problem. Okay, so, uh, my mouth is dry. Kevin, um, do we have any questions from our friends out there? As of right now, uh, we do not have any questions. If any, okay. like as a reminder to everyone, if you do have questions, please submit them into the Q&A or into the chat. I do have that open to catch your questions as they come in. Great, thank you, Kevin. And uh, to, our, to our viewers out there, um, asking questions is really helpful for me. It lets me, uh, it allows me to judge where we are with your knowledge level. Uh, if, like we've always been told, if you have a question, it's more than likely someone else out there has the same question, so please, Please feel free to ask anything you like. So we've gone through the dry stuff. Next, we're gonna have some examples. This is pretty good stuff. I enjoy talking about this. Um, I got an email. I talked about the secure email a moment ago, right? I've red acted a couple things on here, but I get a thing that pops up that says, you have received a secure email, right? Follow the link below to open the secure email. So as you can see in purple down near the bottom is a link, right? Um, and once you link onto that, when you click on that, it takes you to a website. And it's going to ask you for your email email password. It's going to say um, uh, you can't open the secure email unless you provide me with your, your e email address and your password. So it's a simple but, but unfortunately somewhat effective way to get people to type in their email and password. And we don't want to do that. Um, go to the next page. Um, this is another common um, scam attempt. Okay, Kevin, is it okay? You popped up there. Do you have any questions? Uh, yes, we did get a question. Uh, yes, no, you're fine. Uh, they had a question. Would a ransomware actor be responsible enough to give you back access to your data? You know, I'm glad you asked that because as I was, as I was talking about it, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to elaborate on that. Um, a couple of interesting stories. Um, but, uh, remarkably, 
they do respond with the encryption code when you pay them. I've never heard of someone paying one of these ransomware guys and not in turn getting the code back. So what's the term? There's honor amongst thieves or something like that. Um, they actually they actually do tend to give you the code once you pay for it. Um, what we've developed is a couple other tricks uh, because we don't want to store them back up because that may, may mean like a day's loss of work. But uh, um, you can you can bargain with them. You can say, oh my God, you say, whether it's true or not, you say, oh my God, I got no money. I don't know what am I going to do. This is awful. I have no money, no money, no money. And they'll go, okay, okay, $100, right? Well, listen, I don't want to give them a dollar, right? But if $100 is going to get all my data back and save me virtually hours of <laughs> hours or days of effort, of course, I want to. I want to just pay it to get it back, right? So, so yes, they do. They do tend to uh, to respond with the code if you pay them, but try not to pay them if possible. Okay, so I had gone on to the next slide, um, and this is another common example. This this appears to be an email from Microsoft, right? I see all the uh, the the things we recognize, right? Office three sixty five, work or school, personal Microsoft account. Um, so it's a, it's a secure message. Again, a secure message will be available for 48 hours. You can also reply securely. I use email, I use texting. What are secure messages? That's the first red flag. I mean, what, what are they talking about? So um, what's gonna happen here is they're encouraging this person who got this email, right? To type in their email address and password. And it's kind of creepy because there is someone out there waiting and watching for this to happen, okay? And the moment this person presses the enter key, they check the password, they verify it. If it's right, they log in and immediately change the password. You're locked out of your own email um, and, and all the things that go with it. So uh, again, don't give out your password, whether it's uh, speaking it or typing it, please. Unless you're asked by a professional like me who you trust, right? To, uh, for a particular reason, so. All right, so, so Kevin? Uh, yes, we got another question. I've been Wait. getting obviously fake emails and I can see the Gmail account it came from. How can I tell Gmail to revoke that account? Okay, that's a good question. I'm, 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 I'm going to kind of give you a, I'm, gonna give, I'm not going to give you the answer you want. Um, because it's happened to, it's, it's, it's happening, it's ubiquitous. There's no way Google or Gmail or any other company could possibly keep up with this. Unfortunately, the best thing you can do is if, if, it's, a, if it's the same email address uh, more than once, you can block it, right? Use a new program, a Microsoft Office program. But taking that extra step of reporting it, right, is, is, is just, it's not going to generate the results you're looking for. It's, it's, nothing's going to happen. There's too much of it going on, and it's too easy for them to hide. Um, case in point, I have a customer who's the, the executive director. Got a, got a phone call, I think it was, they had a phone call or email telling him that his, uh, his big problems, your computer's been infected and we need, to, we need access to your bank account in order to, uh, to verify your, your, who you are. And this man, who is, a, who is a genuinely intelligent person, right, gave them his bank information and they wired $2,000 out of his bank account moments, moments later. Um, it's awful, right? It's gone. It's gone. Don't bother. Don't bother reporting the police. Don't bother calling anyone. Once money is wired or once money is transferred using electronic methods such as Bitcoin, it's gone. It's not even the country anymore. We we, we don't have control of the environment anymore. So um, it's not even worth reporting, unfortunately. Anything also, else? Uh, yes. Um, so one thing, and this is for me. Uh, okay, great. But I, I know that there are programs out there where I've sent an email to someone and then I get a message back saying that you have to sign up for them to receive your message because mm -hmm. it, I don't know, it's like a security thing that their company may have signed up for. So you have to like verify your identity, but you're not putting in like your personal email address. You just create like this account. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, if those kinds of situations happen, should you contact the person that you're sending the email to? So like, if you have their phone number, like, shouldn't you like probably call them and be like, hey, is this legit, you know, or stuff like that, you know? Okay. The, the answer is it wouldn't hurt, right? Um, but, and, and the other thing is, Kevin, you'll see less and less of those uh, because, because it's so, uh, it's, it's so uh, 
reminiscent of a, of a, of a, of a problem or an attack where uh, years ago, not so much anymore, but maybe for some people, um, spam was a big, big problem. So you'd get a, I'd have customers complain, say, I'm getting it, I get three or five extra messages every day. I'm like, oh really? I get three or 5,000 <laughs> extra messages every day. It's, uh, it's hard to control. And so what people would do, they would, uh, they would say, they would install programs on the network that would say, okay, uh, in order for, for our users to receive email, it's got to come from a trusted list. So you're not actually providing any information other than the person's email and saying you're okay, right? Um, so you're not, you're not really giving away, uh, giving away anything critical of that, okay? Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's go on to the next screen. Now, this is, this is my favorite slide out of the, uh, out of the, out of the group. Um, this is an actual email I received. And the reason I find this interesting in particular is whenever you get an email that is a scam email or is trying to get you to, uh, to steal your money or whatever, or your personal information, there's lots of red flags, not just one, but there's always several. And I just wanted to point out several, the, which ones are on here because uh, any one of these, if you notice, are gonna be, uh, give you the tools you need to say, okay, I'm not going to, this email is obviously fake. All right, so I'm gonna we'll take a look together to find out why. So I got an email from Amazon, right? And uh, on the right in the blue, I've got the, the actual uh, comments written out. Um, so the first one, <clears throat> Amazon, right? Well, what it comes after that? Well, the email address is after it, but look at the sender's email address. Interlocution at chronosaurusblack.christmas. I don't think Amazon would use that email under any circumstances, right? I would say Amazon, or customer service, or something like that, right? Thanking, thank you for shopping with us. Here is a gift card. Gift card. Okay, so let me get this straight. So Jeff Bezos is the richest man in the world. Uh, he didn't get that way by giving out $100 gift cards to everybody, right? Um, no one's giving out free gift cards. It's, it's a, if, a, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. All right? So Walmart, Amazon, uh, et cetera, et cetera. The, if you get a free uh, $100 gift card uh, email, immediately suspect right um number three uh like uh, this is, uh I'll remind myself here where it says link here that's a that's a that's a they're encouraging to click there right well if i were to hover my mouse over that and i can't do it on here because it's a static image but if i was actually looking at the email and i hovered my mouse which means i put it there but didn't do anything didn't touch it just let it on uh, top in this case, the link says, again, that Chronosaurus Black Christmas. Again, not a link that's likely to be provided at Amazon. Um, the fourth one, and this is I find interesting for whatever reason, is there's almost always spelling and grammatical errors that a major company is not going to let get through to the public, okay? Um, a lot of these scams do come from abroad, okay? Uh, for people who are not native speakers of English, right? And you'll see errors that, that, that just seem weird and out of place. Like uh, the next link in the, below that was your account, right? It's got three C's in account, right? Well, that's an easy mistake to make, right? But I guarantee you every single email that goes out from Amazon corporate gets reviewed by probably by dozens of people. And one of those dozens of people is definitely gonna fix that, that, that spelling error. So anytime you see a, a, a spelling or grammar errors, again, red flag, all right? Um, number five, we talked about previously. You may be asked to log into your account. You'll actually just be supplying your username and password. They just need to type it in or make their lives easier. And then finally, you got like a gobbledygook at the bottom, okay? Um, some anti-spam programs also function as antivirus programs. And by putting garbage at the bottom, it's trying to trigger something with that program to say, okay, uh, this is, I'm, I'm interested in, in, a, in a Brownsville, Vermont for some reason, right? So that gets through the anti-spam program by listing those, that stuff at the bottom. Um, again, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's obvious and not, not like a typical email. So, um, so you now, based on this, um, have the ability to, to, to find at least uh, four or five ways to see red flags on these emails and, and know for sure there's a problem. Kevin? Yes, so we've got the uh couple questions. Uh, first one is, um, I got an email from someone in my network with Comcast email. Uh, then when they clicked on reply, the email changed to a Hotmail email address. 
Uh, it turned out this is not the person uh, we know with the Comcast email. Is there a way to check this before replying? To check it before replying. Well, um, when you when you click on the reply button, in that case, it's it's it initiates a new email, but it doesn't send it. So that immediately might be the the, the easiest way to check that. Um, if the email is being presented as a hyperlink, like in the, the with the uh, with the underline here, right? Again, you can hover over that. That'll show you where it goes. So if that Comcast email was on your screen and you put your mouse over top of it, it would probably say a mail to colon something something at hotmail.com. Um, now that that in itself is not indicative of necessarily uh, malicious behavior though. Um, a lot of people have multiple email addresses. They all want to come into one funnel into one place. Um, so that might actually just be someone's attempt to uh, to get an email that they that send to Comcast, but have the, have it available for them to read with their Hotmail account. Uh, next question is: um, Is deleting a phishing email sufficient to remove all trace of the email from my computer? And there's a second question that I kind of want to blend into this first one mm -hmm. uh, is if you open a sus suspicious email, but not click on anything, are you at risk of anything? Okay. Um, now, Kevin, my, my, me my memory is so wonderful. I forgot the first question. <laughs> so the first okay. question is, uh, is deleting the spam email sufficient in removing the email completely from their computer? And the other one is if you open it, you know, uh, is and you don't click on anything. Are you at risk of okay. anything? Okay. So for the first one, for the first one, the all of these attempts at getting your information, whether it's automatically or, or by typing it or by, by getting you to reply somehow, um, all of these attempts <clears throat> are um, are are not static. You're actually doing something. It requires user uh, participation, user interaction. Okay. So the answer to your question is, it's okay. It, the, the email's not gonna do anything. Uh, an email message by itself sitting in your inbox or sitting in your delete box, whatever, wherever it is, has no power. It can't, it can't uh, launch itself. It can't run a program. So um, deleting something like that is good for housekeeping purposes, but accomplish, doesn't accomplish much. Um, um, just it gets rid of that one email. Um, and the second question had to do with, Kevin, remind me one more time. If you open the email, but you don't click okay. on Good anything, question. open yeah. attachments or anything, you just open the email and look at yeah. it. Great question. Um, the answer is that's fine. Um, the, the Microsoft Office and other email programs are now sufficiently advanced that they won't do anything that would make them responsible for, for, for you know, giving your data away. So all of the current malware and spyware that I'm aware of requires interaction by the end user, okay? Um, I hear this a lot where I, I, I didn't click on anything and I look at them and say, I don't say, I say, um, yes, you did, it's the only way I got there. So um, yeah, so it's okay to open the email. In fact, I, I do that often because, I, I, because it's my job to be aware of this stuff at different types of scams. So I'll follow it through once in a while um, and see and see what it does each time. But uh, in general, no, open it. you, you, you kind of want to open the email because you, if you're not sure if it's uh, 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 malware or not, or, or from, a, from a, uh, someone else, other than the person you're expecting, then it's, it's tough. I mean, how, 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 how can you, uh, how can you uh, uh, evaluate something like that without opening it first? So that's, that's safe. Just don't click on any links. Don't type in your username and password. Uh, if an email program has it, uh, which most do, where you can mark an email as junk, so like, let's say you get this Amazon email and you receive it, should you delete it or should you just mark it as junk and then clear out your junk mail? Um, clear, uh, just to, uh, an aside, clearing out the junk mail is not gonna do anything. It just is free up space. Um, these these, these uh, fake emails, they just generate new emails all the time. If you, if you block it or if you identify as spam, it's just it's just a drop in the ocean. It's not gonna. It's it's not worth the trouble. It's uh, nothing's ever gonna come of it. No improvement. So, is that is that Kevin? Uh, yeah, that that, that okay, no more great. questions. You have one more? Okay. Uh, no more questions right now. Okay, gotcha. All right, so let's go on one more screen here. 
Okay, so as I was uh, creating this this uh, uh, presentation, um, I saw that there are a lot of a lot of inter a lot of a lot of um, uh, scams that are we were familiar with from other other methods like from regular mail or phone calls things like that. So a lot of these scams you're going to see are just rehashed in the te technology age. And let me talk about a couple of these here because they happen so often it's important to be aware of them. Um, one of the more common ones these days is um, CEO fraud, we call it. And that's where an employee at a company, perhaps at the accounts payable department, right, will get an email from the big boss, okay? And everyone knows what a grouch he can be. And that email says, I need money wired to this account by 11. It's 1055. You better get it done, right? Well, you got this person. They're new at the job, whatever, right? They're scared. Out, scared they're going to lose their job. So they do it. They do it as quickly as possible. Quickly enough that they don't stop to think, okay? And they just wired money from the company's bank account to a foreign uh, country. It's gone. Goodbye. Um, the FBI will not investigate it unless it's like newsworthy, okay? And 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, 50,000 dollars is not newsworthy, it's just gone. Um, and they'll often attempt to get more out of you after you get that first group, right? Um, so I think it's a law firm, most law firms now, a couple years ago, they, uh, they, they will not wire money Period. That's their way of dealing with it. They don't wire money anymore because so many people are being tricked by it. So that's a CEO fraud. You get an email that appears to come from the CEO. If you look closely, the email address is obviously bogus. That's one way to tell. Um, and people send money. Um, I don't think it's on here. Oh, I do. It's okay. So, um, another one your UPS and FedEx delivery has been delayed. In order to, to see the status of this important package, you need to enter your email info and your password. Well, how does UPS, why would UPS know my pass? Why do they need to know my password? It doesn't make any sense, right? Uh, it's obviously a scam. They're attempting to get you to type out your username and password. Now, I haven't gotten a package from UPS in months now, right? And if I was getting one, I think I'd expect it, right? And why people get something like this and click on it when they know they've never gotten a FedEx package and they finally get to say, there's a, there's a delay in the delivery, right? So obvious that it's a fake thing, okay? Um, you've seen things where you, you, you see the emails, and I, my name is so-and-so, I, uh, I decided to give you $16 million. Well, what'll happen, they'll, the, they'll ask you to provide, um, they'll say you gotta pay taxes or whatever, okay? So it's a common scam, just they're using emails of regular mail. Same thing for in lottery, you gotta pay taxes. Um, this is one, this next one is important because it tends to catch people off guard. Um, you'll get an email from an acquaintance or a friend, right? And it'll say something like, oh my God, I'm in, listen, I'm in the Philippines. I lost my, uh, my wallet was stolen. I'm so desperate now. Just can you, wear, can you please wire me $200 so I can get back to the airport, right? And here it comes, money coming out from, from acquaintances and friends who are worried about them and happy to send that $100, right? Well, that's weird. I didn't, Michelle didn't say they might go in the Philippines, right? There's just there's these these there's reasons you can uh, catch the catch the uh, the lies on this. Okay, um, another common one. This is on the phone to the computer though. Is uh, people will call pretend to be grandchildren of older adults. Um, they're, they're not necessarily easily fooled, but they they are uh, they are prone to the mistake you know accepting that it's a the grandchild instead of a fake person. Oh, grandma, I really need help. I, I crashed my car and I got to get it repaired. Okay, hey, Johnny, I'm going to send you money. So, again, common scam, okay? Uh, this is also very common. Your account has been suspended. Your Verizon email, your Verizon phone is going to, is not going to work anymore because you, you're a bad person. You didn't pay your bill. It's been suspended. All you got to do is log in to reactivate. Well, when you log in, you type in your username and password on a web page. It's not actually what you think it is, right? Uh, free coupons. We talked about that already. Okay, no one's giving, no one's giving out free money. Requests for personal information, particularly W two reports. Every year, a new or or easily duped employee at a, a, a recognizable company's HR department will get a fake email saying, "This is Joe for IRS. I need you to send me all the W two forms for your uh, for your office, right?" 
and there it goes social security number address uh income right complete identity theft right and they're going for the right person they're asking the ar the the the, the human resources people to send the information they do it so um this next two are important as well this the next next last one is particularly uh unfortunate um and this is this is what you'll get is uh you'll get an email saying hey um i have access to your webcam by the way and uh i've seen you in your underwear right and i'm going to share that with everyone at your company unless you send me a hundred dollars right now well obviously a scam right but but it's scary right i mean no one wants to deal with that um so with the webcam you know the webcam is not recording constantly it's only it's they're, they're very careful with the software for these things so that you have privacy i cover up my webcam i don't care i, I I've, I've seen too many times where somehow someone gets through on these things right and they can uh, they can break into stuff um i'm not doing anything to hide i mean nobody can see this face right um but uh uh out of for personal uh for the purpose of a personal um uh uh keeping keeping you know, uh, anonymous or keeping my identity safe i uh i don't like having the webcam on when i'm uh when i'm not using it i'll, I'll take it off it's you know mounted on my monitor i'll take it off and point it down or whatever um but this this is really bad because uh you're, you're saying i'm going to expose you i'm going to embarrass you in front of all your peers right People don't like to hear that, and they think, "Oh my God, I'll send this guy some money." But as as we all know, uh, you should never send money to a blackmailer because they'll just ask for more later. It's a dead end. So, um, and then the final one is that your computer is a virus. Click here to stop it. Again, we got urgency, urgency. You've got a virus. You better click here, click here quick. Well, there's no virus until you click on that, and now you got a virus. Um, so all these schemes have a common element, and we're going to talk about that in a moment. But um, uh, I'd be curious to know if anyone has any comments on this or if they haven't encountered something similar to this or maybe something I can add to my list. Uh, nothing's, nothing's been entered so far. Really? This fascinating topic? No one has any questions? Okay, I must have explained it very well. <laughs> okay, next page. How to protect yourself. Want to protect yourself from this uh, malware and phishing and spoofing and antivirus, right? Almost all malware, just like scams in the past have been, are bought to play through user action, okay? It takes, you have to say yes. If you don't do anything, you don't get invaded. It uh, almost always requires that someone do something. And how do they get you to do something? Well, there's three ways. They, 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 they scare you into doing it, or they take advantage of your naivete or ignorance, right? Or they, think, they make you think you're getting free money, greed, right? So, um, Again, uh, user interaction is required. Um, avoiding this stuff another way is don't go to disreputable websites. If you're, if you're getting something for free, like a movie or a TV show, and, everyone, and you know everyone else is paying for it, right? You're not, you're not downloading just that movie more than likely. You're downloading some other junk in there um, because no one's giving away free movies and free products. There's always a, a catch. And in the case of uh, uh, intellectual property um, theft, um, they just load up with viruses and other junk that will affect your computer. So um, think before you click. This is another thing. Uh, the most common reason people do this stuff is they're busy, right? I got 17 emails I got to answer between 11 and 12. What am I going to do? Oh, look, this one just says, yeah, click here. Okay, okay, done, right? It's out of my, off my list. Well, it's not gonna be off your list for long because you just you just clicked on a link and you gave them some personal information. Uh, your day's about to get a lot worse, right? So the final thing here is how do uh, what 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 can you do to protect yourself? The backups are incredibly important because it's this great opportunity to go back one day in time. Okay, believe me, no one wants to repeat a day's work. It's 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 un un no, no fun, right? It wasn't fun doing it the first time. It's way extra, extra not fun doing it twice. Um, but it's a lot better than ha not having it at all, right? And losing everything. Can you imagine? Uh, I used to. I read an article sometimes several years ago. The most common reason for a small business to fail was because they uh, they lost the uh, catastrophic data loss. They lost their accounts receivable files, and they don't know who owes them money. Oh, close the door. Bye. So, if you have a backup, which you should have. 
then uh, then you're uh, you're protecting yourself. If you store if you store your data in the cloud, that's automatically that's automatically considered a backup. Your data is being stored somewhere on another computer out there in the universe, and it's being backed up by whoever owns that computer. So, Kevin, how are we doing? No questions as of no right questions. now, but I do want to throw this out. Um, mm -hmm. So you say data a lot, um, and I will say that you talk about daily backups. Uh, now, there, I do want to ask, because I, I know that there's the type where you can back up your entire computer, mm -hmm. and then there's, of course, saving your files, as in, like, your pictures. So, like, if you take photos of your family outing, stuff like that, uh, mm -hmm. your documents that you're saving, like, tax forms, files, paperwork that you've kind of stored on the computer, mm -hmm. how, you know, those are the types that you want to do daily backups of, is, you know, the files, like, pictures and documents but uh how about backing up your entire computer so like if someone says oh we've you know we've locked your computer down and now you have to wipe your entire computer hmm. but you have that backup how to restore everything how often should you do those types of restores well the the, the rule of thumb is you should back up it as often as the amount of work you'd have to do to recover it okay so if you don't do a lot of stuff on the computer, if you're writing documents, a couple of documents a, a month, right? Then you back it up once a month. Um, but uh, the, the, the mantra or the uh, common practice is you back it up once a day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, we do yeah. have another question uh, okay. that popped up. Uh, now, as we've been discussing, a lot of the things we talked about have been generally about PCs. So someone's asking, how do you back up an iMac? Well, that's a good question. Um, uh, the, that, that is something, you know, the, the, the Apple, you know, values function over or form over function, I think, and, yeah. and PCs are the opposite. Um, but in both cases, you're not talking about form or function. You're talking about data. You're talking about your documents and pictures and things like that. So that's a common thing that those two computers share. They have nothing to do with their design or function. Um, so whether it's an iMac or a PC or any computer, um, if data is stored on that local computer, on the hard drive inside the computer, then you do want to back it up if you value it, okay? The, the, the industry is going through a lot of change right now with the cloud storage because uh, it's, it's become very affordable to put money out there on the cloud and, be, and, and, and rely on it. It's, it's reliable now, or it, maybe it wasn't before. So whenever you use uh, iCloud from Apple or if you use OneDrive from Microsoft, they're saving your data out there somewhere different data centers here and there and everywhere um and it's it's sufficiently safe that you don't really need to do an additional backup okay um it depends on your how 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 concerned you are to the, the type of data um but yeah it's uh backups are becoming less and less necessary because of all the cloud storage Okay, uh, so we got a couple of questions coming in, uh, okay. but I also want to be aware of time. It is yeah. one forty-four. I just wanted to see how many more slides do you have left? I think that's it. Do you think that might be the last one? That's oh. it. Oh yeah. So do you want to do your shameless plug now, and we'll, oh, yeah, the, yeah, we'll start there, answering right? questions? Well, we could do your shameless plug first, okay. and then we'll all answer right. all these questions as they're coming. All in. All right, shameless plug. My company. Okay, so this is, I'm all right. Thank you for taking time to participate today. Thank you. I really appreciate you coming and listening to me talk. Um, I like it. <laughs> uh, my company, Hyatt Computer, partners with other small businesses to provide boots on the ground technical services. As such, Hyatt Computer's business model suits the needs of commercial accounts that pay a monthly recurring fee. Our customers are companies, not people, and they pay a lot. Okay, uh, we don't do work with individuals because individuals don't need to pay that much. It's, it's a different, it's a different uh, animal. Um, we do not offer residential individual support plans. However. This gentleman on the right, John King. I love John. He's a great guy. He's a, he's a, he's a, he, he operates his own business that specializes in technical support for seniors. He will come to your home. Not now because of COVID-19, but you, know, you get it. Um, he oper operates remotely now because of the virus. Uh, but in, in simpler times in the future, he will come to your home and he will sit with you and hold your hand and do all those things that would drive me nuts. <laughs> So uh, great guy, great guy, Jonathan, I love him. Um, so I would recommend you contacting Jonathan, okay? There's his phone number, 201-870-1429, or you can email him. His website is mypersonalgeek.net. 
Okay, John, I a great guy, as it is. John is a great guy. Tell him Tim Hyatt, oh my God, look at this slide. Tell him Tim Hyatt sends you, right? So I should, uh, should have uh, proof checked my slide. So anyway, this is John. If you have any questions or problems, he will be more than happy to assist you and I highly recommend his services. All right, so I am, so that is the last slide you got? I believe so. I'm afraid to click on the next one. Something might catch on fire. Happens. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So I am going to uh, stop your sharing and I'm going to share my screen with the last of our slide okay. and we'll start answering these questions. Great. Bear with me. Presenter view. Okay. And all right. Uh, just to go in, uh, how does one recognize a disreputable website? And what sort of antivirus program do you recommend? Okay. A disreputable website, um, other than, other than adult oriented websites, right? Mm -hmm. Um, which are disreputable is any place you go because you're trying not to pay for something. Okay. So if you want to download music for free, Roddy Rich or whatever, um, or if you want to download a program or a movie for free, right? That is a disreputable website. That's what I meant by that. Okay, not a mainstream, opposite of mainstream, I'd say. So I said on the, the presentation, I think I skipped it for some reason. It says, no one ever got a virus from CNN.com. All right, so you stick, keep, it, uh, keep it clean, you'll be okay. Um, and the, the what sort of antivirus, they're all the same at this point. Anytime one thinks of the latest, greatest addition, you know, change and update, right? The others add, add it as quickly as possible. So um, it's really become more of a thing like which one came for free with my computer sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, so so I, don't, I don't recommend any one backup program. They're all basically do the same thing. All right. Uh, next question. Uh, my email was recently hacked. Everyone in my contact list began getting odd messages from my email with links and attachments. How did this hack happen? And how could I ha have efficiently alerted all the contacts that this was not for me? And for clarification purposes, this occurred on a Microsoft Outlook email account. Okay. Um, what happened is not what you think happened. They did not necessarily have access to your, uh, your email and your computer. Um, what will happen is that, that again, this, the spoofing, it's when you use the, the, the email appears to come from someone else. So um, I'm not saying they didn't do this because I'd have to look at the case by case, but a lot of times it looks like it comes from you, but it's actually being sent from another computer that's being programmed to look like you, right? So what can we do about it? Absolutely nothing can be done to stop it because it's a program running on a computer. We don't know who it is, we don't know where it is, and we don't have control of it. What's gonna happen is these programs are not emails, just hundreds of thousands of emails, churning them out, right? Um, someone's gonna notice Time Warner, Verizon, AT&T, somewhere along the line, one of the bigger companies is gonna see this traffic and just shut the account down, okay? So you don't have to take action, it won't, it won't, it won't help anything. Um, but it will just go away by itself. Um, in this case, gosh, your question was, how is, what's the most efficient way to tell everyone? Um, depending on your email program, I think there's a way to say, you know, add people from the contact list, right? Um, but it, it's cumbersome, right? Today, in today's age, I don't think you need to, I don't think you need to tell people. I think a large percentage of those people get an email, will see it, Say, oh, this obviously isn't from so and so, and delete it. Um, they don't need to be informed, and um, it's a lot of effort with very low uh, low reward, I believe. Yeah, that would be a, it's very tedious to just contact oh. everyone on your contact list just mm -hmm. to send it because then you'd have to BCC them all because if you email them all in one email, <laughs> then and everyone's then, got their emails, and it's a whole and thing. Then get, and then when they get it, the second email, they're gonna say, oh, is this fake? Yeah. So, you can't, your, your hands are kind of tight. Though. I will say, um, recently we received emails from someone from another organization, mm -hmm. and it's an obvious fake email, but it's their legit email address. Mm -hmm. um, 
you could tell that happened and people came to me asking like, is this, is this real? Is this a legit email? Should I do open this attachment? And I'm like, no, like you can look at this and be like, this is not real. Yes. It has their signature line. Yes. It has all this, but this doesn't look legit. Now, yeah. if you're not sure and you know, this person call them, don't reply to the email because I've had situations where I've replied to an email and the person who but had hacked the email account. Yep. Had replied back saying, "Yeah, yeah this yeah, is yeah, real." I, yeah. No, yeah, I mean, you gotta. I was a call them, call the person, ask them, "Hey, did you send me this email? If you didn't, then you know, delete the email. Delete if it. they did, then you know, it's up to you if you want to open the attachment that you're questioning. So yeah. it's, it falls on that. Uh, right. So going on, we have other questions. Um, uh, I run a small travel agency and just purchased Bitdefender. What do you think of this product? I have a Mac. Well, Macs are supposedly um, uh, virus-free, right? That's not true, by the way. Um, they do get viruses. They just uh, the, the the Mac fans don't like to talk about it. Um, Bitdefender is one of many different antivirus programs. Frankly, um, I, I don't I, I don't recommend any particular one. There's Norton, McAfee, Bitdefender, um, um, some others. Like the name escapes me. But like I said, they're all they're all very similar. Um, and most people use what when you buy a computer, like comes some free software, including a backup program. Uh, for an individual user, um, I would expect to pay like less than fifty dollars for a program, uh, for a good program. Um, it's become kind of a commodity. All That's right. my answer. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So then we've got, what's a good backup system other than jump drive? Also, what's, uh, I'm going to skip the second part. It's just asking about antivirus per software. What's the mm -hmm. best one, but you've mm -hmm. already answered that. Okay. Okay. So, um, the question was about a jump drive. It's uh, the, it's also known as a USB drive, right? I don't have one handy here. I can't find it. My That's a little anyway. flash drive. You all, you all know it, right? So um, external hard drive. All this. Oh, no, no, no. External hard drive is big. It's a, it's yeah. an actual hard drive. In this case, we're talking about little the one that we plug in the USB port, right? It's about that. About it's a bit, it's also called thumb drive. It's bigger than your thumb, right? Uh, got one right here. Hey, oh, yeah, if you could, there it is. Okay. Uh, little flash See, drive. That's a great. That's a great thing for backups. Um, you uh, because of the capacity these days, you can fit so much information on one of those. That's a very good storage uh, method for your backups. All right. Um, the drawback is it's easy to lose, I guess, right? Um, if you don't have encrypted backups, you might lose it. Not only lose it, but someone's going to get access to everything you've ever mm -hmm. done, right? Um, with, with our commercial clients, I recommend that they, we, we don't recommend it, we insist they do a local backup and a cloud backup. So at any given time, all their backup is, is being saved to two different locations to, to, cover, to cover all our bases. For an end user, again, the cloud storage, use Microsoft, iCloud, Microsoft OneDrive, Apple iCloud, um, storage, they do like Apple for 99 cents for 20 jillion gigabytes of space or whatever. They make it uh, affordable and, you know, you can't, hard to say now. Yeah. So I say, well, if, you, if, you, if you have a, if you back up to the cloud, if you say, and I say back up, if you save your documents to the cloud, they're being backed up by the owner of that cloud software. Um, going back to the question previous where they said that they're, that people were receiving emails from them, mm -hmm. uh, uh, they just wanted to say that, uh, and also, you know, that their account had been hacked and all they did, they did change the password and then all those emails stopped going okay. out. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. Yes. You were hacked. Yep. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> um, at some point in, uh, previously, I don't know if you were aware of this or maybe, uh, some, maybe someone else was on the computer. Um, the, the, someone uh, did type in your username and password to provide it to those people. Yeah, and I will say like there are things out there. So like um, on my end, I signed up for like this program. Mm -hmm. uh, it's through it's through our company, and they do like um, where you can put in like your email accounts, and mm -hmm. it tells you if it's on the black market or the black we dark web and stuff. So mm -hmm. like if 
something's ever hacked or your email account might be associated to something, it'll let you know, hey, that your email and your password has been mm. found somewhere. Okay. And, but the thing is, like, um, you know, that's why they tell you whenever you're using your email address and password on different platforms to always change it. Don't ever have the same one across different things. So like if you go to Google, you have your Gmail, you type in your username and password there, that's that. But then you sign up for a program and you use your Gmail as your email address on that account, but then it's asking for a password. You don't want to use the same password. Yes, yeah. it's easier to remember it all. But the problem is, is that then all of a sudden, if someone hacks into, you know, mm -hmm. let's say AT&T gets hacked and you have your Gmail account there and you're using the same password, mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, then you want to just always have different passwords because I've got, a, I've got, a, I've got an amazingly simple and uh, uh, excellent way of dealing with that, Kevin. Um, every letter in the alphabet has a corresponding uh, number. A is one, Z is 26, right? Mm -hmm. um, one one way to keep, help keep things keep passwords uh, different slightly is to add a number on the end of any given password as long as it's long enough and meets the criteria. Just add the number of the letter of the alphabet. So, for example, Gmail. My, I, I could use um Timothy Timothy O seven for Gmail password. Apple Timothy O one, right? CNN Timothy O three. So you got twenty six different passwords. And uh, most 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 people wouldn't look at that and realize it. Of course, it corresponds to the letter of the alphabet. So that's one way to, and and that's the way you also don't have to remember your passwords because all you remember is the letter of the alphabet that the uh, website starts with. Yeah. Uh, so I just want to let everyone know we have three, uh, two more minutes uh, mm -hmm. until this ends. Uh, but I do want to pop up. There is, uh, I'm just going to get these two last questions. Uh, one is, how safe is banking online? Uh, completely. Um, they, they go through a lot. They got federal regulations. They got their own internal regulations. And if, 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 if you ever lose money uh, through an error or through the, the bank being duped or, or, or tricked, right? Uh, they're responsible for it. So I think it's like the FDIC, $250,000 for bank failure, something similar to that. I, I wouldn't worry about it. I, it's too convenient to say no to. Um, and then uh, I've got, I'm on the dark web. What do I do next? Huh. Next, I want you to give you give me the name and number of your mom or dad so we can call them and tell them you're messing around the dark web. <laughs> Um, I'm guessing what they mean is that they're probably their information's on there. So, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, I, thought, I thought it was a gag. So I'm, I'm, hey, I'm, oh so I'm thinking their terrific. information might be like, because like mine, like I know, like if I signed up for like a website once, like years ago, mm. something like this is like back in like late, early 2000s, must be late 2000s. Yeah, what are you gonna, Early 2000s. What are you gonna I was on a website and I had signed up for like, it was like a dating website. I mean, I was like early 20 and uh -huh. I signed up for a dating website. Uh -huh. And I don't even use those things anymore. I, I don't even know if, I think I deleted my account. And next thing you know, I'm getting a notification that my username and password from that had been stolen and it's now being out there. But I mean, that's a password from like early 2000s. So I'm not even worried about having right. to change anything because I don't even remember what those were. Yeah, we all hear about these data breaches where companies that have the social security number 10,000 people, whatever. Yeah. You know what? You can't worry about it. It's, it's going to happen more than likely in your lifetime. <clears throat> um, any effort to prevent it, that would great, the, the effort would greatly exceed the, the benefit, I think. Um, there's really uh, not much you can do about it. So it is now two o'clock. Um, we had one last question. Uh, how do you get rid of pop-up ads? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna leave that to you, Tim, if you okay. can answer that. Um, whatever, internet pro whatever internet browsing program you're using, there's gonna be a tools area that allows you to go in and uh, uh, so called add-ins, I think in Microsoft Internet Explorer and some other places. Um, do a Google search, okay, for your particular browser, whether it's, whether it's uh, Safari or whatever. Um, and they'll give you step-by-step -step instructions how to eliminate what are called add-ins that are creating these extra pop-up websites. All right, uh, that is it. I want to say thank you, Tim, for being here and answering these questions, doing this wonderful presentation. I hope everyone learned something new. I know I did. Um, 
in identifying malicious emails. Uh, don't forget uh, this week, um, Thursday, August 6th, uh, same time, uh, you can use the same link you did to join here. You should have gotten an email. You'll get reminders if you signed up for it. Um, August 6th, we're doing Computer Hardware 101, where you learn about the different components that make up the inner workings of a computer or laptop, as well as some common technical lingo. All right. Great. Thank you. The, the, next, the next one's two days from now, right? Yep. It'll be on Thursday. Yes. So I hope, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope to see you in uh, the next uh, webinar. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day.